after fucking Andrew Schultz spent the best part of a week, it feels like, going absolutely blitzkrieg on fucking Kanye West, right? Which I find really good. His opening monologue about him was absolutely awesome. The first time the kind of all the news kind of broke about him. But it's interesting that he went so hard on the guy, was really kind of, you know, he put on his flipping, whatever that hat is, the Jews wear on the top of their head, and he was really going to town and really of really giving flipping Kanye the business, which makes sense because he probably grew up in New York with around a lot of Jewish people. So he's have a lot of affinity with them, bloody blah, blah, blah. And it's interesting that on the same day, Kanye was dropped from CAA, one of the leading talent agencies out there in LA or in the Hollywood industry. I think the other one is WME, right? There's two WME and I think CAA. Um, and obviously when you sign with these big powerhouse people, it usually means you're on the up and up and big money deals are soon going to come. So don't be surprised if you hear another announcement, but it got announced that comedian Andrew Schultz has signed with CAA. So on the same day that Kanye gets dropped, he gets signed. Is this a coincidence? I don't think so because I don't believe in them. He absolutely torched Kanye for a good, what, you know, for a good hour plus on his show, laughing and snickering at everything wrong that he was doing, only for him to get picked up by the very same talent bookers. I call a conspiracy. And if I was flipping Alex Jones, I would be going crazy. <laughs> you know, Jake. But anyway, catch your deadline. It says comedian and actor, producer, and podcaster Andrew Schultz, infamous, has signed with CAA. One of the biggest and most influential names in comedy today, the business savvy Schultz has been credited with helping spur the de democratization of comedy. It's funny, it's democratic comedy because he still had his special up on Netflix before. So that's interesting. But anyway, he's among those who have proven the comics look to retain ownership of their material by self-releasing on platforms like youtube can achieve equal or greater success both financially and in terms of building an audience in comparison to those who strike deals with streamers or networks this sounds like something that he would write hmm Sauce recently sold more than 155 this is already this is already caa um you know based flipping pr and also something that he might have sent himself but i'm liking this this they're really selling him hard they're making him sound like the fucking steve jobs of stand-up um Schultz recently sold more than 150,000 tickets as part of his 10-month sold out infamous tour which capped off by selling out his 6,000 radio city music hall twice Jesus, to, in this economy, to sell 6,000 hard tickets is not easy. So big up him in general, especially when it comes to comedy stuff, because a lot of these comedians out here, they're not that good at what they do, mate. They talk a big game, but when you actually see them perform live, this is, I mean, it's fucking crickets. He premiered his subsequent special infamous exclusively via the live streaming social media platform, Moment House in July, before releasing it for free on YouTube. <laughs> that was the greatest fucking double dip of all time, innit? Buy it on this special site. It's not going anywhere else. Buy it here. Buy it here. Boom. Later. It's already on YouTube for free. <laughs> Double dip of the century. While Schultz has self-released multiple specials, including his first titled 441 in 2017, he also managed to find success through conventional channels having created and written, performed, executive producer, four-part comedy special, Short Says America for Netflix in 2020. That was actually a pretty good special. I actually enjoyed that. It was way better than the other guy that did that kind of special late show kind of thing that has some large guy with the hands i think the Schultz one was really good the next project coming from Schultz, um as an act is for an actor in in the kenya barris remake oh my god they're doing a remake of white man can't jump that's gonna be absolutely garbage isn't it um remake of the classic street ball comedy is that what it's called it's, it's that's a category it's in classical street ball comedy why not just call it classic comedy Anyway, um, White Mac from 20th Century Studios, which has share, which has him sharing the screen with Laura Harry. I don't know who the fuck that is. He also appears in Netflix romantic comedy, You People, Top Line by Eddie Murphy, Joan Lee Hill, and Julia um, Lewis Dreyfus, which Barris will direct from his and Hill's script. So he's gone in with Kenya Barris. Kenya Barris seems to be a fan of Schultz. So he's getting him involved in loads of things. So that's nice. Schultz will then rejoin Barris for the MGM sports comedy Underdogs, another one alongside Snoop Dogg. Get it? Underdogs, Snoop dog uh -huh. past credits on tv side include hbo's crashing prime video sneaky p and if's benders shots podcast flagrant is listened to by two million devote fans weekly that's crazy 
they're killing it bruv but to be fair i had a feeling because if you see their videos on youtube they basically with the exception of maybe bobby kelly videos and shit um most of them are getting over five hundred thousand flipping views regardless of the guests so they clearly got a good thing going there but then there was two million damn he also um hosts brilliant idols of shaman the god and continues to be read by manager dove manham and attorney gary dobkin and greg gelman at yawn these sound all like very jewish people <laughs> not that it matters but you know that's the business but yeah so big up shots for getting signed to caa pretty awesome in that regard but i just find it hilarious that he trashed kanye in a very excruciating detailed cruel summer um surgical summer sorry type way where to push a t and then later down the line he then gets announced that he's signing to that very same agency he's got a brand new headshot there that looks like it was taken quite recently too so he knew these eyes knew he was eventually going to sign with caa and he went out there and trashed another black man and now he's dancing on a black man's grave but good for him anyway regards he deserves it man he's what he's a fucking hard worker he actually backs his talk he actually is one of the only people in comedy who legitimately i feel like Whatever money he makes, he absolutely invests it back into his flipping brand or his content. The studio improves, even though that set he is set up is fucking annoying. Um, you know, he has more guests. The flipping cameras are awesome. The thumbnails are, I mean, it looks like every bit of money that kind of comes his way, he puts it back into the fucking art, puts it back into content. And obviously, I think the fans absolutely love it also. So big up him in that regards. And, you know, let's see what happens going forward with that.